Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to DBD League. These are the playoffs. The second day to talk about the lower bracket since we are hosting a double elimination playoffs, meaning we have one team going to leave the tournament today. Four teams at the moment coming from the main season, and it will be only three after today. And for such a stacked matchup, you need a wonderful second caster, and we have one. I can tell you that. Rayoxium, welcome in! Hello, hello. I'm glad to be back for this exciting matchup today, starting out the loser side of the bracket. But even though it is the loser side, we are having some interesting matches, but interesting games. We have some interesting sets. Dyer, what do we have in store for us today? Oh, we are starting off with the best of the best, the plague coming in for team Ariandel at least when we are talking about the picks here and plague on the suffocation pit. Honestly, there is nothing better. Not better to kick off a best of five, not better in the competitive environment, if you are asking me personally. A lot of tactical decision making. When are we cleansing? Are we even cleansing? Where are we cleansing? The risk bit. of survivor being found. So, so many decisions to make. And. Ariana and Calamity are two teams that can play really smart. On Calamity end, we have Laser um, coming in with the No Miver against the Billy, trying to make sure that is um, part. Yeah, coming in with this new strategy, preventing um, a slug. And on the other hand, Ariandel with Babo with Ipic. You have so many great players on that roster where you can just say. Wow, that's a bunch of tactical minds. Mm-hmm. Like you said, Plague is a incredibly interesting set, not just because of her power, but because of the shape of the map that we put her on, Suffocation Pit. You have to play macro very, very carefully and see if you can beat out any three or four gens on either side of the map. This is the Ariandel pick, but let's talk again about the second pick that we're going to. It is Calamity's pick. It is going to be Artist, another killer that is uh, played more tactically because she, while she isn't on Suffocation Pit, she is on Azeroth's Resting Place, the Auto Haven version of the Bone Shape map. You have to play tactically, especially because Artist is a sort of... I would say she's a long-range killer. She's more like a long-range harassing you on generators type of killer. She can send birds anywhere on the map. She can have that little tiny bit of natural slowdown. And it, it requires a lot of teamwork from the survivors, a lot of communication. We'll have to see how Calamity plans on playing that because I don't believe we have seen them pick this killer all season. So this is definitely going to be a little interesting. We haven't seen a lot of the artists. I'm very excited about all these picks today because this isn't stuff that we have been seeing so far i'm very excited uh dire what do you think about artist artist is a killer that yeah brings a lot of the table as well you can have very short chases uh when you're facing a strong artist and when you're making a mistake on the survivor team um when we see great gameplay great coordination sometimes a player hiding behind the pallet the survivor with the crows is just running through making distance and then the teammate is helping dropping the pallet. Any strategy like this uh, can really make a huge turn. And then unexpectedly, you are changing it from a very quick down into a long chase. The killer game is falling apart. Nothing works out according to plan. And artists can be really, really punishing. And on the Wrecker's Yard, it's all about time calculation. The map is relatively small. You need to die in the right spots on the survivor side. Requires a lot of calculation from them as well. But once the killer is spending a little bit too much in chase, you can be sure that the survivor team is not wasting a single moment hopping onto these generators and basically blasting them around your ears. So you better don't take a mistake. And the same is for Plague, right? Overcommitting as the survivor team being a little bit too risky. Out of nowhere, you're down in the three-gen area on the suffocation pit, and it's all falling apart. So these two killers not leaving a lot of room for mistakes, unlike, for example, a Trapper, a Demogorgon. So an intense start for a best of five, and Ray, with set number three, the Blight, we just bring this to peak. 
Mm hmm An S-tier killer. I haven't actually seen any Blight matches excuse for yesterday when we had that, I believe it was an Eternal matchup against Ariandel. They're bringing it back. They're coming for another set against Calamity. It's going to be very interesting for me because I haven't really casted or seen matches ever since Blight got his hug tech removed. So I'm very excited to see how the looping style has changed, how Blight has changed slightly. It's going to be interesting. A Another bone shape bat. These teams are going for the tactical side of Comp DBD. We're not going for M1 killers. We're not going for regular S tiers like Billy or Nurse. We're going for the bone shape bat killers, and I love that. I'm here for it. And we also have to wrap it up this best of five. We have killers that are M1, so we are going to have to see that teamwork, that body blocking, that organization with a rape set picked by Calamity for set four. Is that played on Dead Dog still? Yes. Yes, I love Dead Dog. <laughs> the 4K map. It's a very, very interesting matchup. Uh, we have the main building, which can be a huge time sink that we know. Killers don't want to spend too much time there. Usually, you'll see a killer tag a survivor, and if they are close enough to main building, they will just leave them because they are saying, man, I want to pressure these generators, and I don't want to waste too much time just looping around these windows. And the rest of Dead Dog has a lot of playable pallets. They are not end-all, be-all, throw them. It's not a shack pallet. You don't throw them, and then you're completely safe. There's a lot of chaining tiles, so Wraith sets can can be volatile in the sense that you need to be good in the 1v1. You need to be good with your chases. So these can be very interesting and it really does tend to lean towards the team that is better. There's not very much wiggle room for a killer to have just insane skill over the survivors and dominate them. Like they they need skill on both sides. The looping is going to be interesting and fun and I can't wait to see uh how this set plays out. Dire, what do you like about Dead Dog? Oh, Dead Dog soon has this very safe main building where you can show on the survivor side so much about your team coordination and assisting each other. And on the other hand, you have this gallows area and a little bit more open field on the street area where the killer can shine. And this is what makes Dead Dog Saloon so interesting for me that we are talking about half of the map being very good for the one side and half of the map being very difficult for the other. And then we start with these calculation games as well. How far does the Wraith want to move away from a potential 3-gen in the Gallows area? How is he allowed or how much does he want to allow to sacrifice in that regard? And when is the time to make the turn and go back onto the objectives? And that's something that we really see throughout this best of five here and where I feel like this reflects on Calamity and Ariandel really nicely. We have talked about how with how much tactic and how much care these teams are approaching their challenges. And when you're looking on these um, when you're looking on these picks, you see that they are tactical minds. You don't have this demagogue who is just about the question, well, who can go for a longer run? We are not talking about a nurse, for example, where it's just about being efficient on the gens and making the right decisions on the get-go. They are all killers that require macro planning, macro management, three gen management on the plague on the wraith on the dead dog saloon with the artist who's assisting who do we go for assistance so it's all about the bigger picture and i really love that about this best of three and it couldn't be more perfect the oni would be the tiebreaker in this case and oni we talked about it in the past is the best tiebreaker you can ever ask for <laughs> with how intense these matches are and leaving no room for a mistake there we go ladies and gentlemen with the plague on the suffocation pit corrupt intervention eruption brian is assisting a little bit today and thanatophobia as well first thing we see very understandable choice bubble trying to turn the plague's power into an information tool here and first decision now for calamity not too unorthodox on the Sappho pit. Do we hide out corrupt intervention? It's making a return. 
Mm -hmm. We're not spotting out anybody just yet. They're doing a very good job of not giving the killer any sort of hint as to where they are. This map right here is split in a 4-3. We have sort of a forgen on this side. It's a little bit spread out. But over on the shack side, we say that there is a dastardly 3-gen. Before the first down happens, we have to make sure that we have a little bit of good progress on generators. The problem with stealthing out the power like this is if somebody is caught out and immediately downed, then that spells really bad news. Except we do see Rocket, who has stealth his way over here to Shaq. I believe Bubbo might know that he's over here. He is looking around as if he had spotted somebody, but... Do we find Rocket? Oh, we know that he was around here. See, this could be this could be bad news. We get found out and there's no generator progress. So if Rocket goes down, that could be a really, really bad start for Calamity. However, we have found a tile and we are on chase. We are not going to be going down just yet. However, we greet that just a little bit. Will that be bad? Nope. We are playing and we are looping. We have a little bit of a window over there that we could chain together, but no, we just throw this. We don't want to go down any earlier than we need to. Pedro is the only one who isn't injured. Are we working on generators? That's the question. Bubbo seems to think so, and he's leaving Chase with Rocket to go over here and pressure the generators. It has a little bit of progress. So Bubbo wants to kick it and apply Eruption, and he's going to grab his... Uh, corrupted puke right there and that's gonna make him a little bit more lethal so that could lead to another early down just what you'd love to have for a killer such as plague that's really the difficult task right here now getting petrol first of all into the injured state as well that's going to work out for now and now we need some pressure or for the killer that's going to be the case bubble taking the first down into the match here rocket laser marco all fully broken here so we might have the decision for the mid game do we want to cleanse at least with one survivor to have a little bit of a safer resource to work on the three gen basement hook being very very valuable on this suffocation pit as well trying to establish dominance and control as quick as he can Bubble has been successful with that in the past. He will make that another time. Starting on the top side with a 5% generator. Laser has been left alone. They are confident that they can pop this first generator. And it's a good location to pick in regards to the generators as well. You're working here towards the midsection. Preventing a 4 gen from being defendable on the top side. So now we have a 3 and 3 setup on the two sides uh, Shaq looks difficult though and that's definitely something Calamity needs to attack later on it's a great three gen especially with a basement hook inside of it so the next challenge is getting someone um, into the basement and then both of these survivors towards the top side and since Rocket has fully cleansed I would assume he's going for the rescue Mm -hmm. We need a rescue indeed, or else this could turn into a 4k1, something that I would say is very, very common during Plague Sets Pedro, however, does go second. And even though it just started the struggle timer, Rocket is going to go down there immediately and try to save his friend from the hook. Not infected, won't be infected just yet. Rocket, however could be going down here as well we're gonna use our body to block him in the basement are we gonna be able to wait out the 10 second timer for no we are gonna be taking a pallet stun right to the face that's gonna give pedro enough time to walk all the way down to the other side of the map that is just what calamity needed and we're not even gonna commit to the tunnel out because we want to stay on this side of the map where laser is caught out and we'll have no choice but to die in a corner Far away from basement, however, which is a good place for Plague to put a survivor. We have Pedro over here. He's made it. He is safe. He is the tunnel out target, however, so he has to play safer for the rest of the game. He is going to cleanse, become that survivor that isn't uh, injured, so we don't get the 20% reduction from Thanatophobia. But we are still on this side of the map. We still have to try to break this 3-gen over here. It's not that close. It's not close enough to where it's super easy and well written out for us to be able to just uh, break it or just defend it very easily. We're going to come over here and we do find our tunnel out who has cleansed right next to this generator. So we're just going to grab that and head back over to our side of the map. That's our dominion over here. 
and the save does happen on to laser but that does mean that there are two injured survivors on this side of the map with plague in power she's trying to zone this area of the map try to find someone who could be a quick down we see blood there on the ground and yep bubbo is going for it and it is laser as well whenever we hook him up he will be another potential tunnel out target that's definitely not what you want to have happen and now a lot of pressure luckily here on rockets generated that's something we need because laser and pedro are 60 seconds away from the elimination rocket and marco the ones with the fresh stage so you really want to try getting these survivors onto the hook next there would be two minutes of time win for yourself laser 45 seconds onto the hook a little bit of time pressure now on calamity as well and we are straight going back babo knows that the elimination is close babo knows that he can force the survivors into the 3v1 and he wants to achieve just that he has a lot of time as well three gens still standing are uh, giving you a lot of confidence and they make you uh, believe at least that you can commit to laser the question is will laser pull a magical run a wonder on the suffocation pit making it longer than babo is planning this greed from babo and trying to go for the swing does not work out just yet laser staying with the nerves here in the first trial nerves of steel we could say but the second time it will not be enough unfortunate for the live play there as well survivor close by flashlight now calamity has to take some risk for not losing the survivor but rocket has been located we will see the hook stage coming through in a couple of seconds here that should be the elimination onto laser but ray one gen standing we are making progress mm -hmm. however our three gen was broken so we don't have an easily defendable not a guaranteed 4k1 type of map we saw rocket who was over here trying to make it so laser would live just a little bit longer and but it didn't come through and now we are on to the chase of marco who is a fresh hook as well so even if they do get the rest of the generators done on the other side of the map this is still a good chase to have you could have all those three health states including a fresh hook we're just standing here going for a little bit of a game both players being incredibly patient but will we be having a 50 50 lost yes we will and that will be marco down on the ground this is a very very good hook for us three stages potentially possibly coming through and the generator across the map is not that close to being done can we get over there to stop it before its conclusion we're gonna grab our power really really fast pedro cleanse obviously with the idea for potentially going for the save we're trying to make our way over here will it be enough time are we going to be able to stop it it would be incredibly difficult oh no we're here in time that's gonna be really hard for the survivors to pressure this giving it a little bit of a kick to apply eruption to it and now we're in our power it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to be able to juke out this we're going on the chase of rocket who is on the side with the generator the progress goes rebuke but expertly ducks it goes through the pallet we're gonna be having to do something insane here to just waste time but inevitably we do go down we have more progress on this side of the map however so the killer is going to have to be a little bit split in their attention we have pedro who's just urban evading on this side going for the save uh we do have generator progress on the other side so it does seem like we are going to at least get all the generators done and honestly that's impressive right getting all the gens done here it looked so much worse we were talking about a potential elimination on three generators standing and there's generator number five all the way into the end game lasers run might not have been the longest but yeah it was long enough to make some serious impact onto babo's gameplay and the survivor team of calamity just being efficient and smashing through that's going to be rocket now in a very rough chase though he has only been staged one so far meaning that two more oh. stages are possible here and that's not the long chase you're looking for in the end game to give your team members the time to go for the exit doors the hook will be right next to one of them the other one though has been prepared calamity is impressing me time and time again with how quick 
they are on their decisions and how quick they can make a change when it's needed yeah well one survivor of us is leaving the trial well here's another plan and here's an alternative strategy and oh we also prepared yesterday this uh game strategy in case this doesn't work out it feels like calamity always loads into a match and has like six seven backup plans and i feel like <laughs> one of these backup plans we have seen here when laser was unfortunately going down and then afterwards rocket was um been located with the flashlight impressive trial talking about an elimination of three gens and then talking about so many stages walking out of the door is certainly something very special and shows a huge reason why calamity is here in the playoffs and why you should never never ever underestimate team calamity that was a beautiful trial that we have seen here nine stages is great for the plague but it's certainly something you can work with right Mm -hmm. especially if you are able to hold a three gen on one side of the map nine stages not even nine stages but four fresh hooks that could be a little bit difficult to play against we will have to see what uh the killer calamity plays against the survivor team ariando what do you think it is going to happen dire why are you putting me in this? <laughs> Why am I throwing it to you and then I'm getting it back <laughs> after 10 seconds? Um, okay, then it's on me now making the tactical call. Uh -huh. um, I mean, 10, 10 stages as a win condition is when you are looking onto it most of the time, essentially a 4K, right? Because the difference between losing these one or two stages on one survivor out of the door or you are making the 4k in the end game speed run is not that much of a difference so i feel like 10 stages in your mind sounds like i basically gotta go for 4k here and hmm. <laughs> so it feels like a 4k we figured that out um i would say that we need to see a calamity killer that is making sure from the early game that the dominance role is established you don't want to give ariandel any sort of confidence and with that i mean you want the first hook stage before the first generator is coming out and then i think we will see something aggressive i don't think you want to risk too much in camping a three gen on the suffocation pit in the upcoming trial because Ariandel is brutally efficient. Ariandel has shown on multiple sets, including yesterday against Eternal, how well they are with planning a three gen on killer or on survivor side. So I don't think you can gamble here. I don't think you can go into safety after getting the first down relatively quickly. You need to be aggressive and you need to collect the downs actively. Mm hmm. <laughs> That doesn't like, count as an outro, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, of course, yeah, this is going to have to be very, very well played by the killer because of nine stages, four fresh is such an awkward win result. You're either going for like a like a full 4K or just trying to meet a result such as that with like 10 stages, four fresh is very interesting. You're basically playing for a 4K on a map such as this can you afford to go for a, a a three gen scenario it would pay off in the end game if you are able to get a tunnel out such as that so it really depends i'm sure the game plan going into this is not as easy as just one two three we'll have to see what the survivors pull off against the calamity killer it's going to be a very interesting show for us We'll have to see what the map has in store also for the RNG side of the sakes of the game. We'll be loading in here momentarily and we'll be starting and seeing what sort of build we have because the last build didn't even have Scourge Hook Pain Resonance, which is allowed for this set, right? Yeah, absolutely. Telling us potentially that the Plague players are not too confident in getting stages throughout this survivor team and that they are more like either i have to play around my three gen or i might get run for a long time based on the 
mechanical skill these survivors have, and then they are just expecting one or two pain rest kicks throughout the game, and then they consider something like Call of Brian or Eruption um, a little bit more valuable here on the Plague. But I have to agree, interesting decision, because the Plague and pain rest is something that we have seen throughout the main season. So a little bit of an adjustment there towards the playoffs and towards the top four environment. We always love to see that. And Jokart goes with that as well. As you said, Ray, no pain rest. Instead, an agitation. So potential basement play or at least three gen hooking being the strategy, which neglects a little bit what I talked about, that I don't expect Jokart to go too much into three gen grind and more aggressively. On the other hand, keep in mind, everyone, they have to lock in their build beforehand. So maybe these 10 stages being a little bit high uh, now for Jokart and he's trying to figure out what's the best strategy. We'll see what's going to come up here. Thanatophobia telling us that he's definitely looking forward to spread the pressure throughout the entire survival team. Mm hmm Thanatophobia, when all survivors are injured, applies a insane 20% debuff to doing generators. So that either means you are punished for all four survivors staying injured, or you're encouraging at least one of them to cleanse, which can give you power all across the map. And we did see that actually come into play last game where they had to cleanse every once in a while just to be able to make the more dangerous plays and not go down either going for saves or just being in positions that are just easier to be caught out in so we can get more use out of our power we're not seeing the killer bring in double apple which would generate us three pools we are seeing one apple which generates two and we do have hardwell getting a little bit sick there but nothing else happening. The survivors are just happy to stealth out where they are, possibly trying to get... We're going to go in and grab our power Ooh. that early. Do we know where Hardwell is? Bubbo hopped on a generator right then and there. Yeah, we see Hardwell over here. If we get the down with our power, that is going to be dastardly for the survivors. We're going to go for a puke through here. Yes, but Hardwell gets Ooh. the tag anyway. That's going to be very, very good start for Yo-Cat. Just what we need. That's insane, yeah, because you just talked about how they were stealthing out, meaning that they are not too far on the progression on the gens yet, and what a nice one. Two tap almost onto Hartwell. I pick was around with the flashlight as well, so he's not on a generator either, meaning that we have overall two gens combined 60% of pressure, and that's it. That is great for Yokart here, agitation. Not doing too much just yet, but you are fine hooking in the top side here anyway. And now Yoka trying to find the potential rescuer with the little bit of... ...is on the other side a little bit. Strong gameplay by Yoka so far. Now taking a little bit of time puking onto the gens. I'm not sure if that connected because we don't see the point event on the top right side. But you have to go back anyway because we now have the rescue. And you don't want to let Hartwell escape you want him back on the hook and you want to get him down on the top side because this is the generator setup that you picked so in best case you are going to keep the hook stages up here unfortunately though it looks like the survivors will be able to make it towards the midsection but now is the moment where Edgy is kicking in Mm-hmm, because that is our priority. Number one is the generators. Even though our first fresh hook stage did make it to the other side of the map, that is just not the place we want to be. Agitation coming in clutch here is going to take us back into this three-gen side of the map. We did see Stealthy Bubbo making his way around the water tower. He might be there also just to be able to get the save. Yeah, and it comes out very, very quick. Yokan making his way back over here. Little bit of game of chicken. We have 10 seconds seconds of built-in borrow time are you gonna hit me and give me another speed boost to get to the other side of the map nope we don't want it now we don't we do have bubbo over here who is pathing his way back down to this side of the map and now we have about three survivors over here we are successful in getting away from that three gen side of the map agitation's not going to carry us all the way to the other side so we need to get it down and we need to get it fast we do have our power conveniently placed right here which makes us a tad bit stronger now the chase is going to be a little bit more dangerous yep and we had to make some interesting plays but 
we will be going down. And this isn't too far from that side of the map. I'm sure Yokat is beelining for that hook right there. We already have one picked out in our mind. We have two survivors on this side, actually, who are injured and not doing anything. Excise is on this side, completely uninjured, able to stealth. Are we going to try to go for the quick pull as well? Yokat looking around, making sure there's no stealthy survivor here to just go for the quick save kicking this gen applying eruption and now what is the game plan from the survivors they've done all the gens on the other side but look at these these are actually really close as well two gens in mid and we still have a three gen on this uh main building side of the suffocation pit this could be really hard to break yep. yokart had a plan when loading in and you just described it it's going to be insanely hard to break especially because the killer has no reason to move towards the bottom of the suffocation pit you have your hook stage in here we have seen earlier it doesn't even help when they are going towards the midsection of the suffocation pit even that will not be enough with the agitation one survivor there on this side making you possible to keep hooking in your area and that's going to be the next one right here babo and i pick onto the floor hartwell and excise have a lot of tasks on their to-do list excise is going for the pickup there i believe that's why he's getting infected just now or he's linked to a generator no he was right here in the pallet and even that doesn't work fully in time they have to wait two extra seconds before they can move around Good stun right here. Access will get a few meters of distance. That's exactly what you need. He's lurking now, working a little bit as a bait here. I don't think Yokat is falling for it too much. Instead, you're just going to take a little bit of extra uh, regression on the gents right here. Yeah, Ray. Right now, Yokat in the position where you can defend your hook stages there on the top side. You know your gents are not in danger either. Um that's rough <laughs> that's <laughs> my that that's my entire analyze it's rough <laughs> it is rough indeed we have no generator progress well we have a little bit but it really is just not enough and we are about to say bye to bubbo he's going on to the next trial thank you so much for your service you have sat on the hook except maybe not because we have hardwell who is over here is this a bad plan because oh man he is able to get the save however i mean uh, he's kind of in a dangerous position regardless we have to take this 10 seconds and try to make it to another tile try to activate live and get away we just need you to get away man we need you away from these generators away from this side of the map please throw some jungle gym pallets to make it so you're not going down anytime soon is yoka able to outplay this no it seems not we are wasting just precious seconds we need to get generator progress done and now we have thematophobia in effect as well so that's going to make it so generators take 20 percent longer to get done we're trying to outplay this tile right here make it so we don't make it to another safe tile but bobo isn't down just yet the survivors are nowhere to be found that means they're possibly working on gens yes we just need a little bit more progress and when yoga goes are swinging a miss and we have another generator done that is going to be making it a little bit easier to get the rest of the generators done bobo on the chase for his life He's doing a really good job of just delaying this down from happening. Something that was in a terrible position last game is now not looking so bad as another generator gets done. Chaining another long wall jungle gym tile right here. Yokot in a better, worse position than he was earlier. Just chaining all these tiles down and the last generator gets done. Bubbo did his job fantastically. And now the survivors are on. They've turned the tide. That is an incredibly well played out plan from the survivors and now yokad has to go for some slugging and has to just meet this win con my analyze of this situation it's rough and this time it's for the other side it's yokad now we need an end game speed run we are talking about a win condition of 10 stages that we need and when we are looking on the bottom left we have four stages so far even one survivor here will not be enough and they are doing such a wonderful job i pick here running to the absolute corner far away from the action and far away from the exit gates and yokad just desperately puking and puking trying to get 
the power onto this survivor and it's all just not enough bubble will leave the trial as well and out of nowhere calamity from having the best circumstances and an elimination possible at their hand on also three generators remaining in the end game and just getting one survivor last second ray that was a devastating turn around and my biggest question after congratulating ariandel on a miracle on the suffocation pit and the peak of survivor gameplay how do you recover as team calamity from receiving such a slap that was that was pretty insane that was very, very well played. You can just definitely see at these high tier teams what one chase can do. One chase that didn't even go on for that long, I don't think. It went on for just a pretty um, okay amount of time. But those survivors, they were on point. They were, they had a plan and it played out perfectly. Bubbo MVP that game, taking on just a long enough chase for the rest of the generators to just fall like dominoes. It was incredibly amazing to see the survivors play out just like that it seemed like it was gonna go to calamity for sure especially with the start such as that a down happening before even half a generator was done but these survivors definitely showed through they said hey man you know what it's not over till it's over and they will be taking the very first set the very first plague set that wasn't even their pick and now we are staying on the side of ariandel being the being the survivors, Calamity being the killer. I'm sorry, they did take their set. Never mind. I'm just yapping over here. And we will be going on to the <laughs> going to go into the second set, which will be artist, a calamity pick. I'm very excited for this one. I am an artist enjoyer myself. Dyer, what do you think is going to be happening for this next game? The map, the killer, and the teams. The map is going to be the wreckers yard the killer is going to be the artist and the teams are one team being super confident and super happy and potentially dancing salsa in their vc right now ariandel for this insane trial they just played and on the other hand calamity it definitely, I don't want to say they are sad now because it's a best of five you have four more sets ahead of you the other team needs three set points, so the pressure is not instantly there, like in a best of three. I feel like in a best of three, you have no room for a mistake because one set being dropped, instant emergency. You don't have that in a best of five, but 100%, you don't take that without a little bit of having an effect on yourself, especially Jokart, who had it on his hand and then had to watch the Ariandel survivors taking it away. He will go as an artist in again, which is a lot of confidence and a lot of responsibility here as well. And basically you needed to use these three minutes to make yourself entirely free from what you just experienced. It's a, it's a mind game almost. Mm hmm we do have to take that moment to step aside, freshen up, and come back because we are playing a volatile set. A killer that does have a lot of skill expression, especially in chase. On Wrecker's Yard, a lot of the tiles can chain together. So even though you have three anti-looping bird missiles, it doesn't say that immediately you're going to win. You're going to need a lot of zoning, a lot of just uh, playing the tiles rather in a more defensive sort of way, maybe trying to make your way to the other side of the map. Wrecker's Yard, it's sort of a square with at least a tile poking out on one side that we always see survivors just dive to because it's far away from all the other generators on the map. So that way we can get progress. Artist can harass generators with her birds at a long distance range. So I believe Wrecker's Yard can be a 4K map for the artist. We have loaded in a very interesting build here. These are interesting perks. And this is the pick for 
calamity. So seeing Noed like this is interesting because that means that maybe we're planning to have the survivors do the rest of the generators and we're just trying to get the best result that we possibly can. We don't have corrupt intervention, which is so interesting. It is able to make it so survivors don't hop on generators immediately, but it doesn't even matter because it goes away when the first down happens and we already got a tag onto Bubbo. That's going to be exactly what Jokab needs here. We need this down. There the crows. Now one more shot real quick around the shack here. Ooh. And then we're going to have that. But just when he gets what he needs, we are having a head on from Team Ariandel. Poor Jokab. I want to hug him. Can we pause the game? I will give some <laughs> mental support. This is so rough to take now because Ariandel giving him the sign yogurt here's what you need in this difficult early game and then an unexpected head-on ariandel one step ahead of yogurt again just like in the play game when it all looked going towards calamity they were making the 180 turn bubble going down here eventually but that took certainly longer then Jokat wanted that to last. One generator completed, 75% over here. Hardwell being ready for a rescue. Ariandel looks so planned out. It is crazy to see that. And therefore, Jokat will face a struggle when the survivor team is not making a mistake here. The only thing that you can do for yourself now is going for some snipes here potentially or taking an unexpected quick down. Because if you allow Ariandel this room and this freedom that they have right now, I don't see them starting to struggle. Mm -mm. Especially now, uh, we have Hex Ruin up still. So that is helping with a little bit of regression happening here onto the, the main building, I guess, of Wrecker's Yard, which is Shack. But it's not even doing that much. They're just hopping off, hopping back on. We're just choosing to continue to keep the birds hopping in a locker that gets rid of the swarm immediately. That's two generators done. We know that Adam is over here working on the gen that's actually sort of close to the hook. We don't have enough pressure to just uh, sit here and not do anything. We're sending birds over there to try to pressure them off. Ruin is still up. Bubbo goes to second. We see Hardwell, who is hovering a little bit for the save. We do have Forced Hesitation, which can be a dastardly perk going for unhooks. If a survivor goes down, any other survivor that's within uh, less than 20 meters of that down survivor will be slowed for 10 seconds. So somebody one for ones, that means that the survivor getting unhooked will be slowed for 10 seconds, which, you know, is the same amount of time that is the built-in borrow time. So Force Hesitation can make this unhook scenario a little dangerous. And we see Yokat, who is not even leaving. He's not letting Bubbo out of his sight. He wants him to die on that hook. And it seems like the team is just letting it happen as well. They want to trade his death for generator progress. We have two generators that are very, very close. We are harassing I pick off of this. And it is regressing about the regular amount as if you would kick it with Hex Ruin. We're sending our birds to the other side of the map. We are just trying to pressure everybody now. We have our first death at three gens, but it's not even really three gens because there's a lot of progress on the rest of them. Yeah, things seem to go a little bit according to plan, at least in terms of the elimination. Of course, as you mentioned, with the wider spread generators, we will have to see how Yokat is able to deal with that. I pick will be chased off the generator over here that has half progress one generator in the distance is being completed so now the survivors at least are forced to play it in one half of the wreckers yard still a huge area to cover for our killer player but somewhat more possible than the previous setup yoka trying to send some birds over to these generators uh, maybe we can get an unexpected snipe that would also serve as an information tool here knowing where the survivors are currently located ipix generator has been picked up by excise here 16 uh, 60 percent now on that objective hardwell in the jungle gym pallet still up so a little bit of a safer location here has to grapple on the crows and is therefore going outside towards this truck here pulling the killer further away from the generators that are currently progressed interesting decision here 
Um, this TNL will look a little bit too rough, or the four lane it is, but the Crow, oh. and that's the team coordination we were talking about. Exa is coming in, taking the hit with the Crow and dropping the pallet, making sure that Hartwell can go for a longer run here. And the punishment oh. is right there. Fourth generator now being completed. They can go for a reset while Hartwell is going to be thrown onto the hook. And then we have two healthy survivors. So survivor team definitely with the chance to get all the gens done, especially since we have one generator all the way down on the truck here. Mm -hmm. And this will give us our fourth hook, our second fresh of the game. The survivors definitely need to take the time to reset. Their remaining generators aren't too close together, but it is artist able to send birds anywhere on the map. And we don't have very much generator progress while uh, Hardwell is sitting happily right up on that hook. They do seem to be scattering in a way that the next chase isn't happening just immediately. That's what we need. We need to waste a little bit of time. That generator that uh, Hardwell was working on is now regressing with Rune. We can see it all the way across the map. And we are in the chase to Excise here, who's trying to get away from the hook over there. I pick possibly stealthing it, trying to get the save. Nope, he is hopping right on that generator. We can see them right over there, working on it, trying to get just a little bit of progress. And now we have Excise, who is not found, who could stealth in for the save, especially we want that before Hardwell goes to second, because we don't want to have another potential tunnel out. We do see scratches over here, but Excise is not in position early enough, and Hardwell will be taking that second hook state for free. Excise is now being busy right here with a chase, placing a bird, trying to zone Excise into it, trying to get a hit that isn't an M1 because that would lead us for a follow up. I pick abandoning that generator to try to get Hardwell saved without making it a one for one. Little bit of babysitter might make it so Hardwell is able to escape. We see a bird being disturbed. Do we know where Hardwell went? It would be amazing to make this a 2v1 with Ruin still up and no wed still in her back pocket if the generators do get done. We see some scratches heading back to that generator and I pick and Excise are both on it and Hardwell is there as well. That could be really bad. Oh wait, we had ink eggs. So we're placing down four birds going for a shotgun hit, but it does not connect. Hardwell making his way to the other side of the map, making it so if Yokot wants to commit for the tunnel out, that means that generator gets done. However, Yokot knows that and is trying to instead go for a down on Excise, who is a fresh hook. We have the generator being worked on, but it's not enough. It's not gonna get done before the killer can come back and just push them off of it. Rough position for the survivor team when you're stacking together like that and it looked like they were all three working over here in this area then it usually needs to be successful because now we have the hook stage right next to it so Hex Ruin will do some damage. We have not so much of a spread of the survivors anymore so you don't have an alternative generator that has some progress and Yokart also knows where the survivors are. We have just seen one survivor down here next to the generator and well you can assume that on the other side of the map you will find the unhooked survivor and potentially even the rescuer but we are finding the hooked survivor which is hardwell with two stages so far meaning that the next stage would be the immediate execution on the hook and that's going to be the case right here though with the double up we will get generator number five i'm very certain there's no way that this is getting interrupted so end game we should now look out for IPIC when we're playing the most ideal here because IPIC is worth three more stages. If you have to let access out of the door, 10 stages artist, definitely something that you can work with. We are also having a no one escapes death for IPIC. That will not be that relevant, but um, we will have to find this survivor. Access has been over there. Jokat sees that. Exercise hiding behind the rock now, watching the crows. Mm -hmm. that are being shot and Ipic is hiding elsewhere not even close towards the exit doors yet so do we maybe want to split the pressure between hatch and exit door here maybe even between door and door because it's gonna be difficult yeah. to stealth because Ipic is injured while he is the target it seems like the survivors are just sort of accepting that Ipic might be found but if he is able to stealth like this, that means that 
yeah, if Excise gets out the door with it being open, they could just jump and hatch. And I believe, yeah, we're just kind of sitting over here. Yokot might have sniffed out their plan. I pick running around, leaving scratch marks on everything. And now it is the game of zoning. Can we get this? Oh, well, well, we're just leaving the tile. So yeah, it, it seems like we're going to be able to get this down. No, it being revealed. Oh my God. I can't believe a comp killer brought it. And that will mean that Excise <laughs> with his two stages will be walking out the gate. And we have our prize. We have exactly what we want. We have four state or uh, four fresh hooks. 10 stages now that's going to be difficult to beat you're basically going to have to 4k at any point in the game you need to yep. kill all the survivors yeah you have to go for that and ariandel is for me the team that can deal with such high win conditions a little bit better at least from what I remember throughout Season 9, Ariandel has won against Calamity in the main season as well. This is maybe um, important to mention. But even against Elysium, even against Eternal, because Ariandel in the main season managed to win against all these top teams. And whenever Ariandel was basically put in a position where it was all or nothing, they performed. And we have seen in the previous trial on the Plague that Jokart had a relatively good win condition. And even in the mid game, he was looking like he will get this win condition very easily. And even then, Ariandel was stronger. And even then, Ariandel said, well, nice, buddy, that you are working on it. But we are also cooking something. Look at that. And then they all went out of the door. So now you have played a good game on Survivor. And yeah, you have to 4K. It doesn't feel the best, just like in the Plague set for Yokart, but I feel like Ariandel has the capacity of smashing through that, and they are up a set point. So the pressure is also not lift, um, laying on your shoulders at the moment, potentially allowing you to come out a little bit more confident and make this needed step to say, listen up, Survivor team, this is going to be a focus. Mm -hmm. We definitely need that 4K. It would be great to take a set point, but uh, uh, Ariandel's looking really good, especially after that first game. I would definitely be locking in at this point. You need to do something dastardly. Maybe we'll load into a game as well without Corrupt Intervention again. That was very interesting to see. Very non-conventional, I feel. So we'll have to see what kind of build. Still no Scourge Hook Pain Resonance, which I thought was sort of a staple perk in a lot of these builds happening at this high level. But the killers are showing us that they're pulling out something new and exciting for us to watch. And it's Definitely looking very, very, very interesting to <laughs> keep paying attention to. They're keeping us on our toes, especially with these play styles as well. The survivors surprising me at every turn, what they're able to do and all the generator progress they're able to keep up, even in these dire situations. So we're going to be loading in with uh, the... Killer Calamity, or Killer Ariando. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I keep getting these mixed up. Playing against Calamity Survivors. This is their pick, whoever, and we know Calamity for having the jukes. So we'll have to see what these survivors plan to do against the Artist Killer. I have seen them play a couple of these sets, so I can definitely say I'm pretty excited to see what they pull out. I mean, I totally understand you, right? These team names, they sound so similar. <laughs> that it's really easy to mix them up. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will hop on a short break and we will be back with Cariando and Alamity after a short break. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We have taken a moment. We have switched sides, and now we have Killer I Pick playing for Ariando against the survivors of Calamity, Rocket, Pedro, Laser, and Marco. Man, we are already checking lockers. We do not want a replay of last game where we had a head-on stun. Incredibly well-placed. Now our build is definitely something more traditional that you see from an artist game such as this. We have Corruption Invention already in effect closing off one side of the map we have a survivor trying to take chase to the other side as well and we already have progress happening here on to the middle of the map shack pallet we want to get this done to split the map so wonderfully and we're going to be able to get a tag here 
Yes, we are. Shack Pallet is gone. Our safety net. The rest of the map is opened up. We have a an injury happening immediately like this. No follow-up bird. We're just going to use it to zone. Pedro is making his way to this little side of the map that we always see at Wrecker's Yard take. And we have a little bit of progress happening in the middle. Will we be seeing that get done before the first down happens? I pick having to play out his chase as the artist. We are seeing Pedro play the 1v1 right here. We're not even using our birds. We're just using our skills and we are getting the down. This will be really good for the killer because we are in the mid map. We have agitation. We can go wherever we want. And where we want is right here in the middle of Shack. Are we going to try to go for basement? We have two survivors who could take hits. Nope, we're just gonna let Pedro go down into basement. We have agitation and we have the distance and we have made it. However, the survivors were busy while that chase was taking place. And we have a second generator that is close to being done and Ruin still up. I think the Calamity survivors realize based on the plague set, you don't wanna take too much risk here. So getting out this uh, center generator in the shack which can be linked to multiple setups is really important to get on the wreckers yard and once you have that this is kind of your achievement and then better not taking the injuries of course the basement hook can be punishing but i think so far that's a good trade-off for the calamity survivors 35 percent on two generators in the distance and pedro just casually chilling here onto the hook we don't have a rescuer moving in just yet survivors are trying to prioritize the generators, Rocket will have to deal with the foes for a moment, will use a locker for that. And Ipic is happily waiting at the top of the staircase. He does want to camp Pedro into the second stage, knowing that four gens still to go and that he has a little bit of time. And then after the rescue is coming out, you wanna tunnel Pedro into the elimination and then you are kind in the same 3v1 scenario that we've seen in the previous trial and then the win condition of going for 10 stages is not going to be too difficult any longer so i definitely understand why i pick is camping into second stage but ray it seems like we are camping all the way through yeah and you know what the survivors are punishing that killer for staying near the hook because another generator gets done and even this one right here has a lot of progress so yes we are getting the elimination happening onto pedro but the survivors are definitely keeping it a trade they're not letting it just happen for free that generator will be getting done and rocket is already working on that side of the map very very deep into the wrecker's yard <laughs> gets burned twice in a row but hey man we got a locker right here it's no big deal the death will be happening onto Pedro. The survivor's not even in position to even think about saving. And we already have another chase happening onto Laser here. We'll be giving an M1 tag. He will be coming injured. And now we have Rocket and Marco somewhere on the map, possibly working on generators. We do need to get another down before anything else happens. This chase could be incredibly important, especially if we commit. It's seeming like we're not going to. We're going to be pressuring the generators. We still have Hex Ruin up. A famous late game perk. The survivors potentially not knowing where it is. We're not sure. They could take the time to cleanse it. And that would make it a lot easier to get these generators done and not be pressured off by the birds. Laser is injured somewhere on the map. Maybe taking the time to be reset. Or they're just going to tackle these generators. Yes, we have these survivors over here laser still injured but marco not we're gonna be taking the chase on to marco possibly trying to go for another tag but while this is happening every second rocket is working on that d pocket that means that all this time it needs to be managed by the killer but this is already halfway done and we are so far from this side of the map and you know they're playing incredibly aggressive already on the ruin trying to cleanse it but does it even matter because rocket's generator has a lot of progress i pick knows that he spent a lot of time on that other side and is trying to make his way over here to pressure it doesn't even have to kick it just needs to be here to make it so hex ruin will cleanse it a little bit rocket is here trying to oh my god not even in chase vaults it three times and be give it gives an m1 tag all the survivors are injured now, so the next down could be incredibly important. We have Laser and Marco 
nowhere to be found they could be working on the other side of the map as well however it can be that even if all the generators get done it's okay because we just get the rest of the downs and a well-placed bird will award us the down onto rocket we're going to be taking this hook laser marco working on this trying to get it done but it's still not over because they're injured and making sounds possibly easy to find them we just need to 4k so even if this gets done which it did we are still in a winning scenario we need to get these survivors both down and it's so crazy how we are talking the second trial in a row both sets about an end game speed run and the decision coming out in the last minute of the trial showing us how close calamity and ariandel are in terms of their pressure in terms of the tactics and how they are approaching the challenges we are sending some birds over towards the exit gate a rescue is being pressured here as well i pick doesn't want to commit to either of those instead prioritizing the crows here then you're able to at least gain some seconds from the survivor on the exit door is it going to be a down onto marco luckily it is not and now we are deciding that laser will be in the next chase that is forcing marco into rotating towards rocket and getting the unhook but the alternative is that you're just having a fresh hook walking out of the door and that will be enough because now we are talking about nine stages i don't think i pick and i mean i wasn't myself aware that it's a fresh hook survivor so this is the last second decision there marco walking out of the door with three stages meaning that we have nine for ipic and ariandel a one one scenario now in this best of five perfectly equal and even more crazy that both teams have taken unexpectedly the set away from the opponent. Ariandel, oh no, it's the other way around. Never mind, I made the Ray mistake. Uh, <laughs> Ariandel picked the plague and is serving us what we um, expected from that and Calamity doing the exact same. We have the artist, Calamity said that will be our killer and now we are having that. Therefore, Let's make a short summary of what we have seen in this best of five so far. We are in both sets coming out to a last second decision. Just about a few hook stages and all about can the killer use the time efficiently. Second of all, both teams looked incredibly confident. We are talking about outs being taken here. So the survivor teams being on point, the survivor teams being efficient. Ray... This is looking like an insane best of five. And so far, from looking at these two sets, I cannot tell you who's my favorite. I can't tell you who's my favorite either because they're just playing so very well and not giving us complete blowout games. There's not any situation where the first down takes three, four generators. There's nothing where the survivors are caught out and accidentally get all slugged up on the ground. Oh no, we made a mistake. These these teams are playing very neck and neck and it's not even like I don't even know what's going to happen in the game until it's already over because the survivors are just they're juking and the killers are playing very very well taking very very smart moves playing safe and aggressive when need be like these sets plague and artist are incredibly volatile and they're not something that you can just breeze through uh trying to rely on your chase as a survivor or trying to just rely on your perks as the killer as we saw a lot of interesting builds so far these teams are definitely showcasing exactly why they are here playing for us today very 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 close sets however they are taking their picks which you'll love to see you'll love to see them practicing the killers showing up the survivors showing up as well and now we are going into the third set a killer that has been picked after many bands possibly getting into the more territory where either teams could take it you know whenever you load into uh, a picks and bands scenario such as these you want to pick a killer that you are going to have a lot of experience on and you're practiced with so those first two sets could be leaning towards what one side more than the other but now we're getting into set three four and five these killers that could be given to either side we're loading into a set with blight which i'm really excited to see because i haven't really seen any blight gameplay happening this season so 
I have no idea. I know that Ariantel had a Blight set yesterday. I don't believe Calamity did, but I can't say for sure who's my favorite going in. I have absolutely no idea. What about you, Dyer? What do you think is going to happen in this next game? A lot of chaos, potentially, because now we are playing a completely different killer, mechanically speaking. The other killers still require a little bit of setup time, like you have a downtime in the early game. The Plague is trying to puke on the generators. The Plague is carefully picking the first chase and the location for the first chase where you're expecting yourself to get a quick down. A little bit the same for the artist. You want to be careful who you're going to chase. And with the Blight, you rush as a killer aggressively onto the survivor team. You kind of have an idea where they spawn. And then you are getting the first down relatively quickly. And if the survivor team is able to get a generator out be in exchange for the first hook stage, just like we are saying for the nurse or the hillbilly now after the update, that is really, really good for you when you are able to have an early game like that. There, uh, therefore, um, we need to switch the mindset a little bit now on the survivor side as well. We need to prepare that there cannot be so much communication and decision-making early on. Instead, from the get-go, you have to be prepared. And this opens up the potential for mistakes, right? When you're coming out of two sets back to back, where the killer requires a little bit of setup time and where you are getting used to having this let's say, safety a little bit, planning everything out according to the three-gen setup that you are facing, having good communication, what is our plan? And now you are loading into set number three, and out of nowhere, after seven seconds, there is a maniac with a syringe jumping onto you, and you the only question you can ask yourself, where's the next pallet, where's the next safety? Mm -hmm. Then there's the chance for an unexpected two-tap, and then there's the chance that the survivor team isn't as well split uh, split or as well covering the generators as we were used to from the plague set. So I feel like whoever is coming into the set more aggressive and more confident is going to have the huge advantage here. Either Blight finding a dynamic and just smashing through the hook stages and injuries, or the survivors saying, well, we are unaffected from stress. So let me take you around the suffocation pit. And there are certainly some resources on the Sappho pit for the survivors, so the first chase has the potential to last quite some time. Babo on the killer side for Ariandel going against Rocket, Pedro, Marco and Laser. We have a Dying Light that can be painful later on, that's for sure. Brian and Eruption uh, helping a little bit together with the good old Corrupt Intervention and Calamity taking a slow approach here. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately as well, our very first chase that we find is... La oh my god, Laser! Where are you going? <laughs> We're giving ourselves an M1 tag for free. Like you said earlier, Blight can be incredibly hard to chase against. We have our first tag coming through and we are munching pallets. Goodbye, Shaq. That is our one safety net. We don't have a lot of progress on generators considering the trial just started and that will be our first down happening onto laser. Yeah, we can see that Pedro hopped on the generator right here, but it's not even halfway. We have Marco stealthing, so we know that they're not on a generator and Rocket has this one barely started. This is a incredible start for Ariando, exactly what you want. However, Dying Light famously not getting any stacks. I feel like it's a curse every time you bring that perk in, you always chase your obsession very, very first. Trying to go for a nice little tag oh. right here. Hug tech is gone, baby. That means you gotta play the map. You can't look down and slide off any collisions. The chase or the save happening onto laser on the other side of the map. Marco getting that save for free. We're not giving any sort of tags or one for ones. Now we are back on to the case of laser over here, trying to be careful not to give them the 10 second borrow time hit to give them a little bit more distance. Laser going down, however, laser does not have decisive strike. So his second stage is going to be happening incredibly fast. Still no generators done. The one with the most progress is just about halfway and we're making our way to the side of the map where the generators also have prop. That is gonna be very difficult for the survivors to play against. We're just gonna give this a tag right here and it's gonna be progressing. That is the generator with like a lot of progress and we have one happen. 
That's the only generator on the map. That's not looking good for the survivors. And if they want to try to get Laser out of there, they're running the risk of him being tunneled out again and Bubbo already be given the green light to do so because he was not decisively stricken. Meaning that this survivor, all we have to do is wait out that 10 seconds for all time and he is just free game. Free game to be a tunnel out happening super early. Now we can only hope that Marco is not being found right here next to the hook already setting up for the rescue but taking a little bit of risk there as well. This generator here on the right side of the hook though seems to be lost for the survivor team. A huge setback they have to deal with basically an entire minute of progress has been denied together with the minute you have to put back into it. We are talking about a two minute penalty. Uh, feels like we are playing handball. Laser on a nice uh, run here, trying to work with this uh, pallet on the four lane, but a rough one to take, and that's going to be the elimination. No decisive strike onto Laser. Four gen standing with a kill already. That is looking very rough for Calamity. A couple of pallets, especially on the bottom side, have been taken out as well, so there's not uh, this much safety on the map any longer. They do get a second generator and they do get it after just taking the tag onto Marco, meaning that the main building area looks a little bit cleaner now and they are getting rid of this disgusting setup that we had on the suffocation pit. It looks a little bit better now for the survivors. Rocket trying to go for a crouch tag, but it's not going to work out. Eruption and uh, Call of Brian being applied to this generator and of course the survivors now going behind the main building where we just have the generators finding the completion now pulling bubble as much away as possible here increasing the distance and therefore the time loss that the killer has to take and bubble realizes that fakes that he would go over towards the generator and then coming back but rocket nerfs of steel not judging the case too early and still hiding behind that pallet in uh, safety. I feel like we should go for a reset on Rocket, but unfortunately Bubble sees this a little bit differently. We'll come back and trying to down this survivor. Marco and Pedro spreading up onto the generators, but we have three more to go here. So Bubble with this relatively quick down onto Rocket now still doing very fine. One survivor is already setting up for the rescue on the top side here. We have seen him sneaking in or next to the main building and 50% on the bottom generator. Yeah, Ray, it feels like they are doing what they have to do and it definitely shows us Calamity has a plan in mind how to recover from this situation. The only thing I'm worried about is if it's possible because we just found the rescuer a bit too early, meaning that Marco will very likely only face a trade here and so much time win is also not coming out for them. Mm -hmm. And we know that our Unbreakable was saved earlier because Rocket was there to pick up. So even though Marco is on the ground, we could be seeing a save happening. However, that doesn't mean anything if Rocket also goes down. Does that have an anti-tunnel? We see that Bubbo is just flying around and we do have our Renewal go off. That means that we have two stages to take. Marco gets up off the ground, uses their Unbreakable. We know that because Pedro's generator just popped across the map. And now we have two generators left. The survivors are not going down, but it's not looking too good because Rocket will be not going down either Yo. because we have Dead Hard being played out there. A stun happening onto the killer as well. Rocket wasting just as much time as he needs will be dying on this corner side of the map. And there we go. Down for the count. So good what Rocket has shown us there. And these little bit of time wins, 10, 20 seconds against the Blight on the Suffocation Pit can at the end uh, influence the win condition. The first win condition we have, in case you're new to DBDL, is the completed generators. And 10, 20 seconds can mean that the fourth generator is popping later on and then you're putting more pressure on the opponent team. Second win con, the hook stages you get on the killer side and third win condition in case the other two are tied. How many individual survivors have been hooked? Uh, Bubbo scouting the outside of the suffocation pit, expecting that Calamity has a rescuer this time over here. I think he realized that Calamity is doing um, a very good job in sending a rescuer, setting them up early, basically planning where the rescuer is hiding to make 
it very organized and he's right about that because Marco is stealthing already and wants to make sure that he can go for the rescue. Unfortunately, the time is not on his side. The seconds are running out, meaning that Rocket will be eliminated. Fourth generator has been completed. Of course, that final generator would be the jackpot because then you're forcing the survivor team of Ariandel in the upcoming trial to at least take an out, which is pretty heavy as a win condition on the suffocation pit. Ray, how optimistic are you? Two survivors, one more gen to go. Split is looking good though for the survivors, but will we have it? That's really the question. The split is looking sort of good, but not the best that it could possibly. I mean, a lot of the resources were also used during those chases that led to Rocket and Laser being eliminated. So, you know, I want to say it's not looking good. I want to say it's looking rough, but you know, every time we say that, the survivors prove us wrong. Marco able to dodge a little bit of a blight reach right there. Will be taking this window and their life. Buying a little bit extra time. Pedro might be hopping on a gen, but like I said earlier, a lot of these resources have been used and it goes for a little bit of a matrix dodge right there. Not even going for a swing. Wants to be sure to get the tag onto Marco playing incredibly safe and well. We still have a deliverance allowed in the game. So that means that the hook onto Marco could lead to somebody just getting off of the hook. We do see that Pedro, instead of hopping at a generator for that chase, opts to just stealth. They might have just accepted that this will be a 4k1, and instead is just trying to stealth out for either the hatch or for the doors, which could help in a tie scenario. It doesn't help for just... Wait, wait, wait. The first win con you go for is generators, right? So if both teams get to the same four generators completed it only helps in that sort of scenario if Pedro gets out through the door or gets out through the hatch those stages will count in that sort of scenario and we will be taking our hook onto Marco right here who has deliverance maybe they won't even decide to use it maybe just instead trying to uh stay up on the hook letting Pedro get out I don't see where the doors are there is one on this side of the map I do believe there might be one over there in that corner as well. Bubbo just deciding to stay right here. We'll have to see if their survivor actually... Yep, they did decide to take their deliverance. That means Marco is off the hook and able to just, I don't know, waste more time. Possibly try to pressure the generators. Maybe we're going to get the last generator done. Oh no. Except we're running to the corner of the map. There's not entirely too much you could do in this scenario. There's no filler pellets left. There's no exhaustion perk to be used when there's no window. We see Pedro just dropping and picking up his flashlight. What this does is it prevents the crows from spawning and showing your location. Pedro just kind of wasting time. He's not even near the hatch, actually. He's just in the mid-map. Possibly trying to play for the door instead. We will be taking the hook right here on to Marco's second stage. Yes, we have the door over there. We still see it. Bubbo is just happy to sit right here. Maybe as soon as Marco is confirmed for death, they're going to try to rush to the hatch to close it. But, you know, it's not looking like there's much happening over here. Oh, yeah, I guess we're just going to run to this side of the map. Marco will be dying. Pedro over here. Are we going to try to just start opening the gate as soon as we possibly can? This is the door that's furthest from the hatch. So maybe we can get it open in time. We can only hope for Pedro and Team Calamity because a 4k with one generator standing is a pretty standard result. With the Blight, definitely nothing too extraordinary. And your killer can certainly do that. Telling a killer with the blight an experienced comp killer listen up you have to 4k on one generator remaining that is making them feel rather good and then knowing that a 4k one would now be a win if your survivor is escaping the trial would make it even better unfortunate though that babo is guessing correct on the door sees the lights on the switch as well and even though we are seeing a nice attempt by Pedro here. It's not going to be enough. Babo will throw our poor Adam onto the hook. And therefore, we have a very clean 4K1. 4K1, a standard result as we pointed out. So your killer in the upcoming trial, either 4K2, then you have to win or you take it with a tie and you just move into the next set and potentially figuring it out later. 
All gens done also sounds nice. We have to give that to Ariandel, that's for sure. When you know, yeah, just all gens in need to be repaired. Definitely something Ariandel can try to use for themselves as an advantage here. However, all gens done against the Blight will stay a challenging factor. If Ariandel is able to do that, ladies and gentlemen, is something we will find out in the upcoming trial. And we will see you right after a short break. Welcome back to the Suffocation Pit and Laser for Team Calamity playing the Blight. The win condition is pretty clear. A 4k with two gen standing would be a win for Calamity. 4k one gen standing. When it's a clean 4k with all 12 stages, that would be the tie. And we are moving on for now without awarding a set point to anyone. And if Ariandel with Excise, Ipic, Babo and Hartwell are able to get all the five generators completed then we are going to see the win and them taking the second set point here for themselves i pick being injured but he has the main building a valuable resource even against a strong killer like the blight he is moving around constantly trying to waste as much time as possible the firecracker though being dropped a little bit too late that means we will not have a blind and we will have the first survivor being down straight into the match, we have a nice three-gen setup as we know the suffocation pit. So something that the killer can defend here from the first glimpse onto the trial. I would say Laser has a good reason to feel happy. Mm -hmm. Having your first down before the first generator gets done is always cause for celebration, especially when your first hook isn't your obsession. So we finally have one stack of dying light. We're going to see some value this game. I'm sure of it. Now Calamity really wants to take this set because they only have one set point in a best of five. We're on our third trial, our third set, our blight set. We don't want to give any more wiggle room for these survivors, but beating them at a 4k2 could prove to be a little bit more difficult, so we could aim for the Tycon. However, we are not out of the game just yet because an early down and an early tunnel out such as this would allow us to get to a 4k2 result, what we would love to see. We're being incredibly patient, waiting out all the perks that could... <laughs> A result in a longer chase. We'll be taking I pick down to this side of the map again, getting our second stack of dying light and our tunnel out happening. We're about 60 seconds away from I pick being out of the game. Bobo taking an injury, staying on this side of the map. The another generator, uh, one generator gets done on the other side of the map. There's the second one. We hear Bubbo is at this tile, but we have Excise here who is able to take a hit, not allowing a survivor to get downed. That would prove to be an incredibly bad situation. Now we are here with just regular looping on the suffocation pit. A lot of tiles surrounding the middle side, and we have Hardwell, the only uninjured survivor, making their way to this side of the map, possibly going for the save. Nope, we are cut off. Hardwell has to take a U turn and go back. We have the reset happening onto Bubbo. XI still injured. Will they be able to get the save onto iPick before he goes down? We still have a little bit of time. Taking a tag right there. Hardwell will be beelining it towards the hook, making his way to the middle of the map. And we are able to get the save before iPick is sent into the next game. It was Bubbo who is here who had that reset happen. Takes an M1 hit, possibly trying to just buy a little bit more time. We don't want the tunnel happening just yet, but Laser is hot on his trail. The rest of the survivors are injured. Are they going to slam gens? Are they going to take the time to heal? We don't know. I pick Chase is incredibly important in this scenario. Laser has to try to get him down before he wastes too much more time. And not able to cause enough confusion onto Laser here. I pick, unfortunately, going down. We see the resets in the distance. Ariandel realizing that with so many injured survivors, you don't want to face the blight here. Laser has been dangerous, and that is the proof right here. The elimination coming through. Good for Ariandel to reset another survivor there, and Bubble no longer being in danger of a one tap. Laser removing a few resources from the suffocation pit, and there pops Hartwell out of nowhere. That's going to be the injury, though, as Hartwell has no resource around. Will make it as quick as he can towards the bottom side, trying to get away from the three gen that Laser is defending as much as he can. And Hartwell is doing a fantastic job. Laser, though, needs the down and he needs the pressure on the hook stage. He does spot a second survivor in the distance. 
that was access and that was a very valuable information because that moment you knew that these survivors are not doubling up on the top side at the moment so you have time going for the down it can only be Babo sitting there on the generator and I don't want to be too pessimistic but I don't think that will be enough time for Babo to finish that generator I think that will be really close but not the completion except Laser is going back towards the midsection because he does spot Exiles over here should be a trade Exiles should go down onto the floor but Hartwell uh, heroic throwing himself in here delaying the down and Exiles been a fantastic choke as well staying alive and keeping the hopes of Ariandel alive third generator being completed and Exiles still on the run here laser struggling to get the down that is enough time for Babu and Hartwell oh, no. Real oh, for something you had another Jew coming out Ariandel alive Ariandel absolutely grinding here Babu and Hartwell can either double on a gen or go for the reset for free here we do see the reset happening with the medkit meanwhile Babu rotated all the way back towards the main building setting himself up exercise with the chase of the gods oh but they're not out of the woods yet because laser does find the heart Hardwell reset happening not able to finish it with their men kit will have to do another good chase just to not put themselves in a position where they would lose because right here we're all getting slugged goes for a dead hard right there it is perfectly timed buying just a little bit more time Bubba over here trying to go for the pickup but is caught out Bubba will be taking an M1 tag that puts the rest of the team in a potential area to be slugged because we are all injured Excise still on the ground Hardwell's heal was reset because they did have a dead hard hit come through. Laser has to be making these really, really quick decisions. Decides to go back to Exize. Maybe Hardwell would be there to go for the pick. However, we are there first. And now we are going to be taking our hook onto Exize. And instead of going for another reset, we don't have enough charges on the med kit. We have to just sit on the generator. If we get one more done, that means that we are tied. So we are not getting another set, but that's what we want. But Bubble is caught out trying to go for the save onto Exize over here. Hardwell is on the other side of the map. And now we are going to be taking this hook. Possibly Laser does not know which survivor has deliverance, or maybe he does, because as soon as we throw the survivor up on there, they are free to use their M1 button to get the heck out of there and possibly try to go for the other save. Hardwell is nowhere to be found. He is one man standing. Has a lot of progress on this generator, but we're making our way over here. And we have found out Bubba will be using Deliverance to get off the hook by themselves. And now Laser in a position where he has to pressure all of the survivors. He has to make sure he gets this down in a timely manner and make it so the survivors on the other side of the map don't double up on a generator. We do get this down, whoever. And the save does happen across the map. We're going to be taking our prize one sable up on a hook. Our second stage deliverance is gone. All the fresh hooks have happened. So that means that we are free to just devastate the rest of these survivors. And now it's all with the time calculation again. 50 seconds for Hartwell. Babo is broken. You have to plan the reset very soon. Excise is in chase, so Laser needs to make the difficult... Oh, that is rough now that he spotted that survivor. I was just about to say Laser has to calculate carefully now how much time he can invest in the Excise chase before the survivor is rotating in. But when you spot that survivor, then you don't need to make a calculation anymore. Then you can just uh, very, very confidently go into a chase knowing that nothing else is going to happen. Excise going down here, Laser could take the trade but he wants more and that is very understandable five tokens up you can go for the rush very soon uh Hartwell will not make it very far this pallet is not the safest as well especially not against a blight here so we see the quick bump into the main building oh, waiting but the dh coming out Hartwell insane in such a rough situation pulling out the dh so perfectly and we are going back towards excise and babo babo will be put down excess tried to took a hit there but it was not successfully babo will be thrown onto the hook hook stage number eight four more after this for the win of calamity and 60 seconds again though for the survivor team and now 
this minute again and again this little bit of time that you gain is the big question if they can make it work for generator number four and at least going into the tie exiles will go for the rescue once more is doing a lot for the team here faking a little bit by running so close to the hook that he would go for the unhook laser is going for a little swing another fake coming out on the pallet very very beautiful what exercise is showing us here today will take the injury though and laser has to go towards the bottom side checking on the generator so a little bit of wiggle room for the survivor team Mm -hmm. That little bit of wiggle room could definitely make it so they meet Ty, but we have Laser who is just all around the map. His presence is known, and he has seven stacks of Dying Light, which will add up to 21% penalty to doing generators. So the survivors have to work through that, and it can only get worse with more hook stages happening onto Bubbo and Hardwell, especially when we find Hardwell who could be a potential tunnel out. We have the resources being munched on this side of the map. Absolutely devastated. We do have another filler pellet over here, but we're not able to make it in time. We will be taking that tag. Thank you very much. And we will be trying to go for the down here on Hardwell. We have our rushes back just in time. And we are able to take that down and we will be taking our prize. Hardwell going right back up on the hook. We have generator progress happening on the shack side of the map, but it is not enough to get done before we can rush all the way over there. And now we are in a 2v1. Survivors injured. We're in the scenario where Calamity could be taking this win. This win at a 4K2, able to perform under pressure. We have the generator. It is a little bit higher than 50%, but it is not close enough. We're going to be kicking it, applying eruption. And now we are back in the chase with an injured Bubbo. Are we going to be able to win this God Rock? It seems like we are doing a really good job of not giving anything. We have live use, so this tile is basically it. We have nothing else forced to break the pallet. We have piled priority on the rushes of the blight. And now we are taking this chase just around some objects, trying to buy as little much time as we possibly can. Excise is on the other side of the map, but he's just started on the generator and it is not progressed. Not enough. We have dying light just devastating this trial. Our last alive survivor is the obsession. This will be a uh, nine, nine stacks of dying light. That gets us up to 27%. And that is such a huge penalty, especially because we didn't have the generator progress. I, if I was Calamity right here, I would be smiling from ear to ear. They played this exactly like they needed to, trying to take this next set. And it doesn't even matter what happens to the rest of this trial because we are getting 4K'd at two generators, leaving it so Calamity has the second set point win of this matchup today. That is a great comeback from Calamity from a difficult plague set over the artist and the blind into a 2-1 advantage in this best of five. Nice patience there by Laser, making sure that Exile is staying at the pallet side for a little bit longer and then to get in even if he decides to go for the vault. Perfect performance by Laser. Heads down, a huge respect, defending the forge and they're even and nailing that down. Now the tables have turned, Ray, out of nowhere. It is Ariandel being in the disadvantage. And also, we talked about it in the best of five, the pressure is not instantly on the table. But when one team has two set points out of three, well, then it's burning. And now mm -hmm. we have the Wraith and Calamity picked the Wraith. That is problems. That is problems indeed, team. We've seen Calamity play the 1v1 killers. We've seen their dastardly plans and their plays. So I would definitely be looking forward to that. If I was you, everybody, don't go anywhere. We're going to be taking a moment to go on a break. We're going to be switching sides. Actually, we're probably going to be staying on the same side. Calamity killing against the survivor team, Ariandel, on the Blight, on the Dead Dog. Don't go anywhere, everybody. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to set four of our matchup today. Calamity versus Ariandel, and we have 
Calamity playing Killer First Rocket on the Wraith on the Dead Dog Saloon. Now, Wraith is a very interesting set. He's very back and forth. He could be a six stage killer. He could be a 4K. He is definitely a very macro heavy killer with a little bit of micro sprinkled in there. We have the main building, which could be a dastardly time sink. Yes, of course, we see that because we have survivor scratch marks already happening in main. We don't care. We are happy to take our first chase there. And we have Rocket using an add-on to increase our speed while cloaked so we are speedy speedy fast and we already are on the chase of hardwell over here we are trying to make more distance are we going to be able to uncloak before they get to the window we are not first chase is not happening just yet we're going to try to give an m1 tag hardwell gets the fastball but it's not fast enough because that will be the first yeah. tag happening already now we have excise i pick and bubbo still on the map able to do whatever they please. We still have Corrupted Invention up, blocking a couple of the generators, but not all of them. So we'll have to see how long this first chase takes. And it might not be that long because our Nia is now in a difficult position. You only have this pallet next to this little house here, and that's not going to be uh, a resource for much safety. First down coming out before the first generator is being completed rough start for the survivors we also have a pain rest not entirely sure if he's able to hook before that the answer is yes he actually is rocket just on point with the first down here really great work and he also anticipates where the survivors are perfect now you can apply another five percent regression by the kick and apply more on the survivor side to, to do list is getting a little bit longer you also make the return perfectly to catch bubble here who was already setting up for the rescue rocket seems to be very much in control of what's happening on the dead dog saloon at the moment here blocking the window as well making sure that hardwell cannot take it injury coming out one survivor injured not on the generator one survivor on the hook the next survivor will be injured here now because going for the rescue rocket is not joking around at all we can only hope that the second chase for hardwell is going longer than the first one mm -hmm, because we need just a little bit more time bought we only have about two generators worth of progress done we throw our shack pallet our one safety net excise here will be taking a tag a sloppy butcher tag which meaning that these resets are going to take a little bit longer time and there we go there's shack pallet gone our one safety net of course for on this map absolutely you have to break that pallet there is no question the first heal happens onto i pick over there they are going for the reset we saw when we were switching around that they are not too terribly far away but we are going to be using our rocket 1v1 skills and we'll be taking this down onto our tunnel out right here we did see a survivor who was slightly there but they're not able to get the pallet safe and also the hook happens right on top of the generator with that progress it is still regressing we don't have to kick it any more than we need to bubbo is reset we did take the time to go for it but we're now taking another what? tag onto i pick which is exactly what rocket wants and needs calamity has taken their two side wins and they are going into this third or sorry our fourth set with confidence this is exactly what they want and what they need to try and take this win out from under uh ariandel very strong it's a dream wraith set basically that rocket is showing us here so far next injury already we can barely switch quick enough through the perspectives of the survivors um that's how fast rocket is going for the pressure here on the survivor team excise i pick hardwell the three injured survivors need to make sure that they are having a little bit of a run because the number one resource that the survivor team needs now is time you need time to go for healing you need time to go for attacking the generators and all of that doesn't really seem like a possibility hardball going down straight again and we all know what that means it means that we are losing a survivor in the wraith set before three generators have been completed an insane achievement so far by rocket here we are going into the basement it costs a little bit of time that might be the third generator then finding the completion not entirely sure it depends if rocket is picking the right objective to check on the answer is he does but they are committing to it anyway excise getting generator number three so ariandel 
definitely speeding up on the generator side. They know that the efficiency is needed now. They know that they have to deliver nice fake attempts there with any means necessary. This animation of um, putting the pallet back in upright position can make the killer believe that you're going for a vault. I still love the Wraith skin in the Spectator, by the way, one of my all-time <laughs> favorites. Pain rest coming in, unfortunately. Excise um, causing a little bit of a uh, drop there on the progress on the generator. It's not easy, that's for sure here. Um, it definitely looks a lot better now with one generator to be completed than three generators that we were facing beforehand. Though I think it's not guaranteed that generator number five is coming out here. It all depends on Rocket now potentially over committing or making a mistake. Mm -hmm. And Bubbo goes for a little bit of greed right there, but Rocket calls them out and is able to get another tag that will make the rest of the survivors a, a complete danger right here of actually just being killed. Rocket goes for another swing right there, but is unable to connect. We have not thrown a lot of our resources. That first chase being relatively quick for how many pallets are left on this side of the map. And we do have Excise and Ipic here, possibly trying to go for a reset. However, it is not able to be done just yet. Trying to commit for it. Oh my God. They're just reading each other's minds right here. We just need to see who has the quicker reaction time to vaulting windows, throwing pallets. We are now committed to a chase over here with Excise. We have a couple of thrown pallets, but they are still playable. And now we are just going to leave it. We're going to go all the way back to this generator that had a little bit of progress. I pick who is now healthy. Bubbo, who is in danger of going down, but not too much danger. Oh, goes down underneath that pallet. We have so many that are up. But is somebody hovering around for the sneaky, sneaky pallet save? Are we checking? Yeah, we're going to check the lockers. We don't know where I pick is. Maybe a head on. Maybe just stuffing around for the save. I pick is around. Are we going to be caught out? Yes, we are. However, we are still healthy. So this doesn't mean we'll be going down just yet. However, this is not a good situation to find yourself in. If we can get everybody slugged, that means that we will be forking at one gen, which is a hard result to beat as a rate. Absolutely. Yeah. Even though the Dead Dog Saloon is a strong map for the Wraith, it is definitely... Ah not what you are looking for as a best of five result in a set and especially not in this set where you're already down by two uh, against one here so if this is the set where calamity can take the potential win you are certainly looking forward to take more than the standard result and unfortunately 4k1 is pretty much the standard that we've seen most of the time throughout the main season rocket is also finding exercise right here and will now uh, just finish the business we could say that's going to be the final survivor onto the floor ray real quick into a dialogue for the next trial calamity needs all generators done how do you play this on the survivor side aggressive careful do you abuse main building as much as you can do you will we see body blocks or is that too risky i mean if <laughs> I believe it will be just the perfect amount of risky. You can play aggressive, but Wraith is an M1 killer. You are not instantly going down. It's not such as a Blight who has to hit you and then it has his rushes to immediately come get you again with an incredibly hard to survive in sort of chase. You have to still play M1s, especially on Dead Dog, where there's a lot of filler pallets, a lot of 50-50s to be won. You can play as aggressive as you want if you can follow through. A lot of games the way that they play you see from wraith sets is you take a tag and then you make it to the main you make it to the main building and we didn't really see that happening from the survivors that could be what re led to our result of being 4k with one generator left so we might be seeing that happen from calamity even if you need to have a friend nearby to take a body block so you can make it to main it's just an incredible time sink we did see the first chase taking a little bit longer because we were there but none of the resulting chases afterwards managed to make it all the way over there we did only have two stacks of Scourge Hook Pain Resonance used as well. I'm sure Calamity is feeling really good about this result. We've seen them play during this entire season, and we know the coordination that they can use. So they're definitely going to be taking this next game in the stride. 
Ariandel is going to have to play out of their mind to either meet or beat this next result. This will be Ariandel's most important trial of the year. On the killer side there, whoever is taking it, if it's Babo, I pick Exa, I mean, could be so many players from Ariandel because they all have the necessary experience, but whoever it is, I don't want to be in that position. Mm -mm. Because Calamity up by a set point, all gens done is a nice narrative that you can get in your heads, you can hype your team over it, you can say, all gens done folks then we got it then we are through then we are guaranteed third place in season nine winning 700 dollars with that as well so huge potential here for calamity and they've been so good on the blight set with their survivors they've been so good on the artist with their survivors you have to do so much on Ariandel's on Ariandel's killer side here. Ladies and gentlemen, it will be an insane trial that's ahead of us. Dead Dog Saloon, Ariandel on the killer side with the Wraith. We will show you that just after a short break. Welcome back, everyone, to the Alive Cat Saloon for trial number eight in this best of five. Babo on Ariandel here with the Wraith and Pedro, Laser, Marco, Rocket for Calamity on the Survivor side. Win condition. <laughs> Quick uh, stun over there. Win condition is very clear. We are having the all gens completion win condition. Very nice for Calamity. Always amazing when you hear that. Ray, are you hyped? I'm a little bit hyped, considering they have so much on the line. Ariandel is going to need to 4K these nerds and try to stay in because they have money on the line. And you know what? That's the best kind of thing to have on the line. So we're going to need to be playing insane. The survivors are just playing aggressive. They are in the killer's face. Bubbo, hello, how are you doing? We're just gonna out loop the heck out of you. We're just gonna get six stage. That's the most that we're gonna give you. And you're gonna take it and you're gonna lick it because we are taking our chases around this side of the map. It does look like it's empty, but no, we have a lot of loops with a lot of 50 50s to win. And Pedro is not going to be losing, not just yet. We are wasting a little bit of time. We throw that pallet, however, that will be resulting us not going down we are baiting a swing right there bubbo knows it we're gonna try to bait another swing right here pedro playing out of his mind winning every 50 50 in the first generator is already done insane work right here from the survivor <laughs> team this is the confidence oh, the enemy means necessary what a disrespect into bubbo's face getting slapped with exactly that pallet right afterwards and the blind as well this is what we call confidence when you know yeah we just have to go for all the generators then this is how you play it rocket here so beautiful in uh, cooperation with Pedro. First hook stage. Yeah, nice that we got that, but one generator, almost two generators being completed here. And keep in mind, we don't need to worry about outing the rain here. We only need the generators being completed. That will be enough to go for the win in this best of five staying in this tournament laser taking an injury right here was not able though to complete this generator so a setback now for team calamity and if this is a quick down then bubble might be able to work with that difficult mind game here as you not always see the killer around this tile but laser has the nerves of steel that is so beautiful moving around one more time we'll make it back towards the pallet calamity right now seems a little bit unstoppable Mm -hmm. They are winning these 50-50s and playing with confidence. Exactly what we need. Another generator gets done, and it's not even the one that was that we saw had a lot of progress. So these survivors are playing so very well out of their minds. We have another chase park to try to make these last a little bit less time, but it's not even happening. We need to get these downs, and we need them fast. However, Laser's the only injured survivor, and he is just looping. He is doing a great job of wasting time does go down but pedro marco and rocket are just all around the map they're in their little playground and just getting gens done we have them 
It's a little bit stealthy rocket over here with a little flashlight, maybe trying to go for a sneaky save. However, the hook will be happening onto laser, and we know that it's a scourge hook pain resonance. It was earlier, but that is another fresh hook. We are no closer to getting a tunnel out, which is a strategy we often see used by these high tier teams making it so there's one less survivor in the trial is way easier and we just go right next to where we saw rocket stealthing right in the bush became one with the bush we are nowhere to be found and marco is over here just happily working on this generator oh yeah, it was a rocket sitting there in the bush not a claw that it's the rocket going to become one with the environment now therefore able to go for the unhook. Babo is going to come immediately back, wants to get laser out of the trial, second hook stage as quick as he can. Nice fake there on the TNL, eventually not going into the vault and Rocket now taking a hit for the team member. You wanna spread the stages across the fresh survivors. They are all worth two minutes of hang time on the hook, so that's something that you can use for the generators. Laser trying to attempt another fake this time. It will still work out. I was saying Babo had this mind game just before and should maybe be the winner this time, but Laser staying stronger. Babo eventually forced to go invisible again and kicking the pallet, which is giving Laser more distance and more time. Not going to make it. Laser, the captain of Team Calamity, absolutely grinding here back and forth and eventually it's coming to an end but Ray we are having four gents rip, uh, repaired in a moment we only have three stages so far Babo needs some serious pressure on the survivor team I feel like we almost need to go for a slug if we don't get any noticeable pressure here because calamity is unstoppable we need slugs we need hooks we need we need everything and basically five minutes ago now going over towards rocket here he's make going to make a 180 turn laser being unhooked though bubble even now facing the difficulty that there is a generator over here that is going to be repaired so you cannot go for the tunnel out onto laser additionally calamity coming in with the for the people making sure that you don't even have an argument going for laser bubble basically has to be at three locations at the same time oh we saw that laser was right there on the other side of the wall being a little sneaky rocket was gonna get reset by him that is something you would not expect for a, a survivor who is the tunnel out to be close to danger but calamity knows exactly what they're doing because this game plan is working out perfectly now we are taking another hook right here onto a survivor goes for a little bit of a fake right there we see the rocket stops struggling just a little bit too early but we want this one because it's a scourge hook pain resonance we're gonna take a fresh hook we're gonna get something out of it there's a lot of progress on the generator right here and the map is perfectly split the Sol calamity could not have asked for a better game they already take it they went into this trial knowing exactly what they wanted and they are exactly getting that Laser will be losing the first 50-50 of the game and will be our tunnel up target. However, there are three other survivors left in the trial and we already saw they had a lot of progress on the generator. Pedro right here taking a body block hit goes down but will be only rewarding a second stage. That is another tunnel out target. However, we needed this like 10 minutes ago. Now the survivors have a lot of progress already happening and it's looking like it's going to be done and that will be the win for Calamity today against Elysium Ty. Goodbye, Ariando Calamity. We'll be taking this set today. Congratulations for Team Calamity. Ariando, congratulations for becoming fourth in season nine but calamity coming out on top here just barely getting into the playoffs with that last second win in week nine against trauma now as one of the top four and basically taking the reve uh, revenge here they lost against ariandel in the main season now they are back this time they are stronger and honestly if you lose in the main season but you then win in the playoffs well that is the match where it matters so good job here towards calamity and has been very fascinating to spectate this best of five marco going down and <laughs> rocket just <laughs> just for the just for the grind set getting another pallet back into upright position what we see here now is also 
a little bit of celebration and a little bit of happiness by Team Calamity and I feel like that is very much deserved because you played a best of five, you placed all four sets um, to make a decision, therefore a dominant and a great performance here in that final set. That means that Calamity will go against the loser of Elysium and Eternal. Elysium and Eternal, the winners from yesterday, they are still in the winner bracket. They will play on Saturday, 6 p.m. Central European time. And Calamity will play against the losing team from that match on Sunday, 6 p.m. Central European time. It was definitely an intense, hectic, great, stunning best of five that we have been witnessing today.